Okay, hello to video number three of uh, Diaries of a Coronavirologist. It's the uh, 17th of March today, happy St. Patrick's Day. And we're up to about 197,000 cases and just under 8,000 deaths are from COVID-19 to take the data from the Johns Hopkins tracking website, as I probably will at the start of most videos. So it's a strange St. Patrick's Day because here in Baltimore and in lots of places around the world, all the bars and restaurants are closed, so none of us can go out and drink a fresh Guinness. That brings me to the topic of what we're gonna talk about today, which is social distancing and the idea of flattening the curve. But before I get into that topic, I want to just take a couple of minutes to do, I guess, a bit of housekeeping type of thing, to steal an expression from a podcast I listen to. I've been absolutely overwhelmed by the response today uh, from me sharing this channel. So many subscribers, so many new Twitter followers and all that. My phone has not stopped buzzing all day. Notifications have been coming through. And going into the containment lab to work with the SARS-2 virus was actually a nice bit of respite from a buzzing phone. I do say that in jest with a smile because it's been awesome to see how many people are interested in this and that the idea seems to have resonated so well. So thank you for subscribing and I really do aim to put out quite a lot of content here as I discussed in my introduction videos, but I want to stress something I said in, the, in that first video, that this is a secondary priority to me. My main focus is the research I'm doing in the lab and I really will endeavor to put out videos, but this is a secondary priority. I'm also trying to work out what my priorities are in terms of the topics I want to discuss. Um, obviously this is an ever-changing and ever-evolving situation from day to day, and I've got to work out what I approach uh, when. So please keep leaving comments and asking questions uh, on these videos. I may not respond to them, but I do look at them, and I'm going to try and use that as a way to gauge which things I should talk about and try and give you the information that you're after. The other thing I'll say, is apologies for the low production values. Right now, again, priorities wise, sorting out production is a lower one. I've heard that the audio quality is not great and Eagle Eye Munch, you may notice I'm not wearing the AirPods I was wearing yesterday because I found out that they don't actually record sound on videos. So there's a lot of background noise coming from the freezer and probably the PCR machine. I am literally sat in the lab where I do work. So I'll try and tidy things up as I go. I'll try and learn as I go and try and improve it. One thing I have learned to, today though is that it's not too hard to stitch two, two videos together. So instead of trying to do a five, five minute or so video in one take, I can now actually take a little break and make sure that I save the things I like that I've said before I go too far and say something I dislike about how I've explained it. So the topic for today is going to be social distancing and the idea of flattening the curve because I know it's something that we're all suffering the consequences from and will continue to over the next couple of weeks at the very least. So I want to talk about why it's being done, but I'm just going to take a little pause because I quite like the little introduction I've done here and then I'll have a little awkward cut where it comes back to me talking about social distancing. So before I go into my discussion about social distancing and flattening the curve, I just want to point out that this outbreak, this pandemic we're in, is a constantly evolving and changing situation. New information is coming out every day and viewpoints will change and adapt as it does. I had a great comment from Peter Hotez uh, today, he's a great person to listen to about this outbreak, that said something along the lines of, it sometimes seems that these outbreaks are just set up to make us look stupid. So I just want to stress that maybe some things I say in earlier episodes as we move forward, I may go back on them, I may change my views and the things I say as new information comes out. This is part of being a scientist. Take in new data and use that to adjust your hypotheses and your ideas and your models and build from the data you have at hand. So to that point, friends of mine will probably remember that I was for a while downplaying, for want of a better expression, the extent of this outbreak, or the potential severity of it, I should say. I'm now fully on board with the ideas of social distancing and flattening the curve as I've learned more and started to look at more data and understand more about the epidemiology behind it. So to talk about why these measures are being put in place around the world, or why they've already been put in place in, place, uh, in countries around the world, I'd like to just mention the reproductive rate of a virus. So this is a number called the R naught, 
or R0 if you would prefer, but it's strictly the R0. So this number for SARS coronavirus 2 appears to be around 2 to 3.5. What that means is for every patient infected with SARS 2, they can on, or they will on average infect between 2 and 3.5 people. And this allows for exp exponential growth. And I'll just use a little example to explain how damaging exponential growth can be uh, in a second. But first, I'd like to point out that the reproductive rate, this R0 value, is not intrinsic to the virus. It's not a biological feature of the virus particle itself. It's something that we can directly impact with public healthcare measures, such as social distancing. But to give a demonstration of how exponential growth can be damaging, I'd like to use an example that, again, friends of mine may remember me talking about before. That's the lily pad riddle. And people may have heard it, but I'll use it for those who may not have heard it. So imagine a pond that has a single lily pad in and lots of other life. If this pond were to be overrun by just lily pads, let's say, that would potentially damage and extinguish all the other life in the pond. Now this lily pad doubles every day. So on day one, there's one lily pad. Day two, there are two. By day three, there are four, and so on and so forth. If by day 30, we know that the pond will be completely covered in lily pads, 100% coverage, on what day is the pond half full? So just a little one to think about. I'll pause for a little bit to let people go and think. I won't do an awkward cut this time. If you're thinking day 15, I'm sorry to say that you're wrong. It's day 29. The way exponentials grow, go, is they double each day. So if you're half full on day 29, you are 100% full on day 30. This virus is showing exponential growth and we, are never, we can't predict where we are going to be in that exponential. At some point it will top out, but we don't know at what stage we're at and we don't know how damaging that growth can be. But we do know that that growth can severely damage the healthcare systems and put them under incredible strain, which puts lives at risk. So this brings me to the concept of flattening the curve. Instead of having this exponential growth, we want to flatten the curve. I might get crop props in future episodes, but for now I'm just going to use my hands. Flatten the curve to delay the amount of time uh, to hit certain milestones in numbers of cases. We may still hit the same number of cases, but by flattening the curve, we can extend the amount of time that takes. And why this is so important is because there are limits to our abilities to run healthcare systems. In America and in the United Kingdom, it's a pretty similar number. There are only 2.8 hospital beds per thousand people, or possibly ICU beds, so intensive care unit beds. Uh, I might have to fact check myself and put that in the comments. But basically there's not enough beds for how many people could be infected by this. And sure, 80% of cases of COVID-19 appear to be mild, but there's still 20% that are severe and many of those are requiring hospitalization. And that would just put incredible strain on the healthcare system. So as well as having this influx of patients into hospitals and running out of healthcare equipment to look after them, this also puts healthcare workers who are doing such fantastic jobs of looking after patients at huge risk of being infected themselves. That's then gonna put even more strain. If you've got fewer staff, fewer people able to care for the people that are getting sick with COVID-19, there's more strain on the system and things can then start to exacerbate and get even worse. People will die from COVID-19 if we do not control the growth of these case curves, this exponential growth that's being seen around the world. People will also die from other diseases. If there's strain on the healthcare system, people requiring care won't necessarily get the care that they require. And horrible decisions will have to be made by healthcare workers, which I could never imagine doing, for which patient is gonna to have to survive. Which patient do you give the oxygen to if you've got a limited supply? So we really need to flatten the curve and that is why we are going through these social distancing measures. It's why bars are closing, it's why restaurants are closing, it's why sports events are closing and cities are having curfews and flights are being canceled and all these kinds of things. We can't totally stop spread of this virus at the time. Maybe at some point we will. 
but we still need to go out. We can't be completely shut up indoors. We need to go buy food, and apparently we need to go buy lots of toilet paper. But by limiting contact with people as much as possible, we can delay the time it takes to hit certain levels of cases and give the healthcare system the time it needs to deal with cases and get patients out that have recovered to free up beds, free up equipment and so on. And to speak from the research side, it gives us more time to do experiments and look for potential treatments. Topics for later videos are the kind of work that we're doing here. We're looking for potential antivirals, for example. If we delay cases as long as possible, that gives us more time to do the research, to find potential antivirals, to check they're safe, and to start working on getting them into patients for trials. So it's really important that we reduce the number of cases as much as we possibly can. And sure, that really does suck for all the reasons that we're gonna be experiencing already, or you will soon experience, or whatever it is, or have already experienced but it's really important decisions that are being made. So please keep following the guidelines that are coming from your healthcare systems and your governments. Keep washing your hands, keep trying to limit your contact with people. Even if they don't have symptoms, there are cases of asymptomatic spread. So someone can seem healthy and can still be spreading this virus. We really do need to work to flatten these curves to limit how severe this outbreak is. So please, please stay safe and do everything that's being recommended to you by the healthcare systems. So this video is a little bit longer than I'm kind of aiming for. I'm typically going to go for that two to five minutes thing I talked about in this, uh, my introductions. But I felt that it was one that I really wanted to stress, uh, especially as things are you know, here in Baltimore and in places in the UK that I obviously have first time, well, I have the best experience with. It's just starting. With these, it's going to get harder the longer we're in these measures. So I really want to stress why it's important. So please stay safe, wash your hands, try and limit your contact with people, and thanks for tuning in. Hopefully it's given you a bit better understanding of why we're doing the things we're having to do. And I'll look to publish another video fairly soon as time and energy allows, because right now it's coming up to 10 o'clock and I'm ready to leave the lab. So that's 10 p.m. and why the curtain's closed. So thanks for tuning in.